Good morning, everybody. So we were seeding last night these sloughs. Um, we got about we got our cart about half empty. So far on track. Um, as you can tell, it's doing a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not going very deep because I want to get this stuff popped out of the ground very quickly. The ground's very warm. I'm just going like canola depth here, just trying to scratch it in. You might still see some derm on the ground, which is a, a derm. Wheat on the ground, which is a good thing. Right there, that little red one. Overall, so far impression, uh, quite happy. Definitely super stoked about these Packer wheels back here. Yes, they have tires in them, so they have their kind of pros and cons, right? But man, does it ever hold this little drill up. I think they're five and a half inch tires or something like that. And uh, it sure does hold that drill up very well. In fact, what will sink is the front caster wheels and these little gaffers. I have sunk my cart down a few times, but not that I would notice it. I've got more power than this poor drill needs. Uh, to its own demise, actually. So I need to be careful where I go because that 1167, it would drag it through without wheels. <laughs> so I have to be careful uh, where I go and uh, so on and so forth like that. But so under some, uh, I did some further review of this second pack of um, uh, second fan and basically the, I want to keep calling mid banders, but the second air pack that the, that the previous owner put on this thing, it was an add-on. And I, I couldn't figure that out because I was like over here and I was like, how come this one looks new and has the divots? Like this is a newer thing versus just the plain pipe over there. I'm like, what the heck? How come this one has divots? And this is the FERT pack. And then remember when I said it has two different pipes? That makes sense as two different pipes because this is an add-on. And then I was uh, looking around underneath uh, underneath these clamps. I'm pretty sure uh, right there. They still have the part number and the sticker on them. So this has not been added for very long. I don't know if he's done a season with it because, and that would also make sense because if you're blowing your fertilizer out, it's really hard on your drill. Look at this. We all know what nitrogen does to steel. We got nitrogen in our rims. We've got nitrogen on our shanks. We've got nitrogen on our frame. We definitely got nitrogen back here on our shanks and frame. And then again, right there. So if this had done this, if he had if he had this FERT pack on here for this entire life, this whole front of the drill would be rusted solid, these shanks would be rusted solid, it'd be, it'd be a rush show. And maybe this isn't optimum, but it's working for right now for what we need it to do. For sure, the first thing that we're gonna do when we finish these sloughs is wash this drill down really good with a pressure washer, get in and around all these shanks, all these springs, and uh, try to keep it from rusting anymore because this nitrogen is just ter terribly corrosive uh, to the front of this drill. So we want to try to keep it as shiny as possible and you can clearly see it's not going to be shiny for very long if we don't take care of it. This actually pains me to even look at. But I'm happy that I have that burnt pack that I can get some nitrogen down. I can't get a lot down because you know we're slightly uh, capacity uh, limited. But let's take a peek. So these are a funky little door, but like that. A lot different than what I'm used to. So I should be half. I don't know if I'm quite half, maybe I am. So the wheat looks like it's going on okay. Let's go to the nitrogen side here. Nitrogen is definitely less. Uh, I bet you we're two thirds, maybe more. Nitrogen, nitrogen's either going on a little on the heavy side or my wheat is going a little bit on the light side. Either way, I'm not overly concerned. It's this one, <laughs> the FOSS. Should also be half. Oh, wouldn't you look at that? I only took a pail or two out of there. So I 
Yeah. <laughs> so I changed some sprockets because I'm not exactly sure what the density of this is. It's a blend. And uh, it probably showed me on my blend sheet, but I don't have a blend sheet here. So I'm just kind of literally winging it. So I, uh, I think I took a different density fertilizer and I put on some different sprockets and we'll see if that makes a difference. But I was having a little bit of trouble once we got to the field here uh, last night with my clutches. Now, it does tell me that my clutches are turning in there. My monitor does work. It shows me two fan speeds. I know it's pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, it doesn't tell me if a clutch shut off, I don't think. Maybe it would, but I'm not going to trust it, so I always try to keep an eye on them. Regardless of that, those little Valmar plugs, that's at least what I call them. I know you guys call them something else, but that's how I know them. Um, I was definitely having some wire connection issues uh, on clutch one. So uh, we actually snipped off some little wire shavings and jammed them in the holes for better connection and uh, we've been clear sailing ever since. But when I turn on tank, this is, this is your uh, tank two, and tank two has A and has B. I don't know, it must be two different preset settings, whatever it might be. And when I turned on A, it turned on B. And when I turned on B, it turned on A. And I'm like, oh, no big deal. The wires are obviously crossed over. No worries. I'm just going to work with it. I, if I'm on A there, I'll just run B over here, which is what I'm doing. But uh, I'm not 100% sure if we're going to have this solved. But I'm not overly concerned if I don't put very much FOSS or any on. But anyways, good enough. <laughs> Let's go seed. You can tell all these little slews that I'm doing. Getting in around. And then I just keep hopscopping my way around. All right, let's go have some fun. Oh yeah, I also realized that the 1167 is awesome, but it is definitely not the tractor for the job because I can't turn sharp enough. Uh, this thing, uh, you would think you should be able to turn this thing on a dime and leave 10 cents change, but uh, if I turn really sharp with this, since it's such a short drill, I still can't make this drill back up. In fact, I, this, this, I can't even make this little caster stop. My 84 is so much bigger. If I turn that the same sharpness, frick, I'll wheel that back of that drill right into the air cart. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, that and this is a solid frame hitch. I have wagon steer on the uh, 84 foot that helps me turn even more. So I gotta be very careful that track does not meet hitch frame. We don't want that, even with my sliding hydraulic hitch. So if I turn too sharp, I also tear up the crop. So that is definitely a big con. So lots of cons right now with the 1167 on there. But I was going to a few places there last night where there was still water kind of oozing out of the side hills. And I just pointed straight and I'm just going right through the water and I'm dragging this thing right through it with me. Where if I had the 724 on there, a lot lighter tractor, a lot less traction. And you know, you'd be using most of it, if not all of its horsepower. Uh, I don't really want to put myself in that situation. So uh, right now we're wired in. I don't want to really unwire it to wire in the 724. So we're just going to keep chugging along with the 1167 and we're going to try and be very careful we don't tear up any or too much crop. But for future tents, it'd probably be the 724. So I should show you the monitor as well. So we have replaced. Oh, of course it's going to beep at me here. Yes, I acknowledge. Okay, there's our fans, fans one and two. I'm probably a little bit on the high side. You don't need to run that much wind. But anyways, it was 4,000. It kind of creeped itself up this morning. You got your switch box here. This basically is for your rear tank, manual switch. Here's your center. You got your A and B, front tank, and then if you want to calibrate. Um, so I just leave all those on. And then this right here is your master switch. On, off. It's which is not focusing, but anyway. And then I, uh, I try and map it up here on my John Deere screen so that way I can calculate my acres because this isn't calculating any of your acres. And I don't know, that's your front shaft and it does work. I'm not seating right now. Rear shaft and then shaft A, which I'm actually on shaft B. So there is a little confusion there. So total area on this drill, and I don't know if this is accurate or not. Uh, it says, well, I've put a few on, but basically 1,200 acres. That doesn't seem right. You would think that there would be more than 1,200 acres on this thing. 
maybe it's not counting somehow. Anyways, doesn't matter. The drill really hasn't seen that much work, so that's awesome. Let's go back up to our fan here. Right, perfect. Okay, guys. And then uh, it's so funny because every time I want to put it in the ground, I keep going up here. Like it's just habit. I go up here to hit my switch down, but then I'm like, oh shoot, I got to hit this one. And then I got to hit this one so I can map at the same time. <laughs> Don't worry. Like I used to be a flex go 5,000 kind of guy because that's what I used to run. And I still kind of, you know, have a soft spot in my heart for them. But um, they had a master switch as well. It's a little different setup, but anyways, let's get cracked. And we're seeing. Yeah, my window's a little dirty. My window's always a little bit dirty. Of course, we're looking into the sun, too. No sectional control. I can see it's blowing out the furk. You can't see that. Ashton might come out a little bit later so we can get some outside shots, too. It's probably hard to make out, but there's this little wee sliver right here. Like, literally, it's like 40 feet. And then I manually put it into the ground. a little bit there but you just come in here and you make a swipe oh it's pretty muddy in there actually no big deal sometimes you got to seed a little bit into the stuff you've already seeded not overly worried about it take it out of the ground that one's done and then we got these water runs we're gonna we're just gonna go a loop and we're just gonna go seed all the way down this water run because I left those ruts. Remember the water was flowing through here. This is Ashton's field. And crop doesn't grow in mud, you guys. Yeah, I know, I just went through some mud. <laughs> but it really doesn't grow in mud. So we're gonna reseed this draw. You can tell that I actually went around a little bit right here. And that's basically what we're out here doing, just kind of running around. And you're trying to watch your tracks. I'm gonna turn here a little bit. When you're going straight, you're not hurting a crop. Even if you turn gently, that'd be fine. If you turn too aggressive, you're gonna tear that crop up. That's the downside of having the 1167 on here, but it is what it is. And then when we're done that, we wing it up. It puts those back wheels down. Watch them. them in place kind of a weird setup flex coils were very similar Again, which picks up our packer wheels in the back. There, ready to go. So we're now back at the yard. Uh, we're gonna load up with some FOSS and nitrogen here. In the semi, it is incredibly tight to do with that little pencil auger that's on that hopper. And uh, the only way I can do it is uh, it's definitely a two-person job, at least for us. <laughs> Trying to watch Donald scratch his head to figure out. <laughs> How to put this thing in it's really tight like this is not optimum but for what we're doing here oof, oof, easy mike <laughs> i might be just a little bit too close Perfect. 
Perfect. Thumbs up, you guys. Woohoo! Boy, that's tight, eh? Yeah. Boat hits the trailer here and doesn't quite reach under there. We got to put a little shovel on there to uh, deflect the rest of it in. You can actually get a low profile hopper that kind of goes out. At least you can on the other ones. Flex coil, that's what I'm used to. I'm sure we could on this as well. Well, I guess that's about as close as we're gonna get here. We're right up onto the trailer there, so. And we didn't use much faucet, you guys, so we have to really look into that. We're not gonna even add any. Shovel, right, yes, shovel, got it. Oh, and I ran over my shovel yesterday. We we're using it on the deflector just like this because we loaded once already. And uh, I unhooked it and it fell down because we we're moving this auger around. And then we're like, oh man, we're jammed. So I just quickly ran in the truck and drove it forward to get the auger out, ran over my shovel. Such a classic Mike move. There we go. We're full ramming speed. <laughs> Actually, uh, this little auger works awesome. There's not even any rust on this thing. You know, for a 1997, using fertilizer on, this thing is in awesome shape. Heck, my, my new drill has more rust on it. about full. Awesome. Boy, these stairs are pretty straight down. It's like a John Deere Ford track. Well, that's true. All right, we'll get this auger out of here. And now he swings it. All right. We're not going to load any fast and hardly use much. We're going to go load some wheat, though. And that's on a trailer with no truck. So we're just gonna drive the drill underneath the auger and uh, offload it that way. Then we're gonna try back oh, this cart underneath this auger. And the only thing I'm trying to do here is just steer the cart. I'm not even worried about the drill, I'm just trying to steer that cart around. It's way easier to do with this two track because it turns on a dime so quickly than an, than an articulated tractor. Well, that took me far too many tries. <laughs> it was way faster. We're not going to put any fog. all these times packing up backing up trying to get that thing straight in there last night two tries this time 22 tries <laughs> so we just got to the field because we had to make a long move with this thing actually moved pretty good I went pretty slow and it's raining on us my field is quite dirty it desperately needs to get sprayed but it's just barely big enough to get sprayed uh, this is still that new project, that land that I took on there last year. That's just a dirty mess. So, uh, yeah. And I don't really want to run my fans in this rain, so we're just going to sit tight, I guess. But we're back going again. It's a little bit on the wet side, some of these sloughs. But we have an 1167. If we get stuck pulling this, we're that would be embarrassing. <laughs> All right, Ashton and Chapel, they're sitting in the cab there. They're gonna take it for a pass here and we're just gonna kind of watch them. So we're seeding wheat. See if you can see that. Wheat.
So unlike a Paralink, where each little packer wheel is behind each shank individually, and the, every shank is completely independent from the other one. <coughs> oh boy, I'm smelling that fertilizer that's blowing out. Mm. This has got one roll of packers so all the back. Here's our fur. <laughs> it's snowing. That don't make funny of that, Mike. It could snow still. So we're blowing the fur on the ground, and then we're actually kind of burying it. Looking pretty awesome. Alright guys, we're gonna take in some uh, uh, we're gonna basically just enjoy this, see some clues. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Talk to you guys later. Adios.